What's up everyone, it's Jessica and welcome to Critic. In these series, you'll learn all about the workup to acute kidney injury. This video covers the most important group of causes to diagnose immediately, pre-renal kidney injury. Let me explain to you why. Now what on earth do we mean with pre-renal kidney injury? The name implies that the cause of the kidney injury lies before the kidney. In other words, the kidney itself isn't the problem. The damage is being done due to inadequate perfusion of the kidney. Now why is this important to distinguish this ideology as soon as possible? Because this means that the extent of the kidney injury is probably still reversible. You've got a kidney to save here. The kidneys are perfused via the renal arteries that stem from the aorta. The renal arteries branch off until the smallest arteries, called arterioles, enter the nephron in Bauman's capsule. Bauman's capsule plus the arterioles make up the glomerulus, which is part of the nephron responsible for filtration. Blood, that needs to be purified, enters Bauman's capsule via the afferent arteriole and leaves via the efferent arteriole. Note that they're both still arteries and not veins. If there is a problem in which this perfusion is decreased, we call it pre-renal. Solve it, and renal function will most likely recover. So how to diagnose pre-renal from non-pre-renal causes? The patient's history will help you most, as it's usually a combination of dehydration and meds. But let me get into this a bit further. The easiest way to remember the causes for inadequate renal perfusion is to divide them into two groups. The first is diminished effective circulating volume, which can be subdivided into an absolute and a relative deficit. Now, what do I mean by this? Diminished effective circulating volume means that there isn't enough blood to reach the kidneys. This can either be because there, in fact, isn't enough blood in the body, hemorrhage or dehydration, etc., which I call an absolute deficit, or because the blood isn't within the vessels, which is the case in congestive heart failure, decompensated liver cirrhosis, sepsis, which causes capillary leak, etc. This is what I call a relative deficit. The second group is some sort of a stenosis or altered renal vasculature. You'll probably immediately think of renal artery stenosis, which is very true, but also very rare. More commonly, the problem lies within the arterioles. If the afferent arteriole is constricted, less blood will be filtered through the glomerulus and GFR falls. Common causes are the use of NSAIDs. Likewise, if the efferent arteriole is dilated, blood will travel the path of least resistance, so it will prefer its way out of the glomerulus and thus GFR falls as well. Common causes are ACE inhibitors and angiotensin II receptor blockers. So now you see why NSAIDs and ACE inhibitors are considered the kidney-killing combo. I hardly ever prescribe the two together, though if you do, please make sure the NSAID course is short and monitor renal function. And don't forget that patients can get NSAIDs over the counter. The most helpful lab work is a urine sample on sodium and creatinine. Note that you also need these in serum. Calculate the fractional excretion of sodium to see if the kidney is 1. Trying to retain sodium and 2. Still able to retain sodium. If it is, meaning that the fractional excretion is less than 1%, this means you're dealing with pre-renal kidney injury. Watch my video on the fractional excretion of sodium for more information. If your patient is on diuretics, remember that those diuretics force sodium excretion, so calculate the fractional excretion of urea instead. Link in the description. So the next time you see that 80-year-old patient on a hot sunny day who's on ACE inhibitors and diuretics and decided to take an Advil to stop the fever he was having, you can now deduce that their kidney injury is probably pre-renal and thus still reversible. Check the fractional excretion of sodium, and in this case of urea as well, to be sure. Stop the damaging meds, give IV fluids for rehydration, monitor urine production, and watch that serum creatinine normalize after a day or two. If it doesn't, Consider renal and post-renal causes. They're up next.